Welcome back into Queen City News. Now some major roads to Western North Carolina are beginning to open and we're now getting a better look at just how much destruction there is. Entire towns all across our mountain counties look like this. This is what's left of Old Fort, a town along Interstate 40, about 30 miles east of Asheville. Mills Creek runs through the center of the town and the Catawba River is also nearby. Neither town could handle the water Helene brought to the area, just like most counties across our mountains. Now this is part of what makes Helene one of the more devastating storms to hit the Carolinas and to discuss more about that this morning and joining us live is Dr. Kathy Dello with the NC State Climate Office. Uh, Dr. Dello, thank you so much for joining us and just jumping right into it. I think a lot of people see the devastation. They see the rainfall and they think to themselves, how does something like this happen? Yeah, so Lean was a big storm. It had a lot of water in it, and it had a lot of time over a warm gulf to get bigger and get more energy and then just smash into those North Carolina mountains and just rain out and cause all of this destruction. So you mentioned the North Carolina mountains and smashing into that. Uh, is there anything when it comes to the mountain counties that enhances the rain that we had and really what Helene had to 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 bring into not just Northeast Georgia, but why so focused over our mountain counties? Yeah, so we know in North Carolina, we can take a hit from a hurricane on the coast, but we can also see impacts when they hit the Gulf. And this is what we saw with Helene. And our mountains act to enhance the precipitation that comes from a storm like Helene. So Helene had a lot of water in it already, but when it encountered the mountains, it has to lift the rain condenses and falls out over an area. And we know these mountains are kind of egg carton shaped. They're not super tall, but they are steep. And when you drop 20, 30 inches of rain over these mountains, there's only one place for it to go and that's down into the valleys. Yeah, and unfortunately that, that all happened so quick. We had a number of flash flood emergency, landslides, mudslides, and, and the, just the rain was just uh, unbearable for the mountain counties to hold. Uh, what was the main cause behind all the devastation that we've been seeing? Was it the landslides? Was it the flooding? Uh, what attributed to most of this damage? It was a lot of everything compounding on top of each other. So there was actually a storm ahead of Helene, and then there was a drought ahead of that storm. So we had really dry soils. We had a storm move in ahead of Helene. It was a frontal boundary, dropped about half a foot of rain. Then we had Helene. And again, you have these really steep mountain slopes. Um, and when you're dumping that much water on them, they can cause landslides. The water only has one place to go. And we saw flooding worse than we saw in the Great Flood of 1916, which was the flood of record up in western North Carolina. Speaking of flooding, I mean, I have a graphic here showing what you've been dis depicting in terms of those rising levels, causing more rainfall, squeezing more moisture out of the clouds and unfortunately out of Helene, which led to the, those heavy rain events and, of course, those flash flood emergencies. But when you talk about the abundant amount of rain, how does Helene compare to other storms that we've seen hit North Carolina? One of the most memorable we just celebrated the anniversary was Hurricane Hugo. How does this compare to other major storms? Yeah, so this is a very major storm for North Carolina. It feels like Florence, but in the mountains, and some folks have compared it to Katrina. But if you think back to three years ago, we had Uncle Storm Fred, and that, ca that caused catastrophic flooding in Canton and Crusoe, North Carolina. Helene was a little bit bigger, and we're seeing the fingerprints of climate change on Helene, that really warm gulf, that warm atmosphere, which can hold more water. It was just primed and ready to go. You mentioned the fingerprints of uh, global warming or climate change. Have we seen some of these events more often? I feel as though we've been talking about devastating weather disasters more and more. Not that we don't love having you on the show, but unfortunately, they, they tend to be for catastrophic events. Have we been seeing these more often? Yeah, I would love to see you. Um, and if we were talking about and that happened two weeks ago, potential tropical storm eight. That dropped over 20 inches of rain on southeastern North Carolina. So we have both sides of the state that have received catastrophic flooding in just a number of days. And potential tropical cyclone eight didn't even have a name. It could have been named Helene, but it didn't meet the wind speed. It didn't have the core, but had the same impact. So, you know, we're thinking about not only what are the impacts of these tropical systems, but 
should we be thinking differently about how we categorize them? We know we categorize hurricanes and tropical storms by their wind speed, but we see the impacts here in North Carolina through flooding, like we saw with Helene, and storm surge, like we saw with potential tropical cyclone eight. And, and uh, Dr. Dello, this is our, our time. Last question. You touched on something really important. Tropical Cyclone 8 wasn't even named. So the intensity of the storm is typically what people depend on to decide how impactful or how devastating it's going to be. How deceiving that can that be for when we have very heavy rain events included in that? It can be so deceiving because we just think it's a typical rainstorm and we have those in North Carolina. It can be deceiving when we think of a storm as just a tropical storm or just a category one hurricane like Florence was. We really need to be thinking about the impacts and not the category or the wind speed, but we've now seen this devastation here in North Carolina uh, and we know that it doesn't take a category five hurricane to truly ruin communities.